Okay, everybody, what you see here is I've redrawn my highly stylized skeletal muscle cell because trying to erase the one I had shown you fine people previously was just too big a hassle. Look at the mess I made of that thing right there. So I just redrew one that's kind of nice and clean here. And let's go ahead and label the parts. I only gave you one label to start us out, and that's down here. You can see SR for the sections of sarcoplasmic reticulum we would call the terminal cisternae. And there is nothing wrong with going over this a couple of times, so stick with me as I fill out and label some of the things we see here before we talk about the relaxation of a muscle cell. So first, what would be inside this sarcoplasmic reticulum? at rest. Well, a whole bunch of calcium. But we're not at rest in this picture. What has the calcium done? Well, it left through these voltage-gated calcium ion channels and it bound to the troponins, didn't it? So all the calciums are out here now bound to my troponins. This is where they would reside here in the sarcoplasmic reticulum, but right now this cell is in a state of contraction, so they'd all be out there bound to things. How did they get out? They went out through voltage-gated calcium ion channels. Voltage-gated calcium. Oh yes, repetition's good, everybody voltage-gated calcium ion channels all over the sarcoplasmic reticulum. What triggered the opening of these voltage-gated calcium ion channels? The voltage wave traveling down the T-tubules. If this isn't making sense, rewatch the last video segment, and you'll see that little lecture that we have on drawing a skeletal muscle cell and contraction. So what triggered them? The voltage wave going down the T-tubule which is right here. The calcium was then released, go down into the cytoplasm, binding to what? The troponins. See, I'm labeling, just a little practice. Causing them to pivot, roll over, fall down, pulling the tropomyosin ropes, the blue things, off of the active sites tropomyosin, allowing the active sites on the actin myofilaments, which would be black here, actin to be exposed, which lets the myosin heads grab and pull, grab and pull. The myosins are the thick filaments, the green ones here. So again, just review for everybody. This structure that we see here from Z-line to Z-line, of course, was a sarcomere, right? The functional unit of skeletal muscle contraction. And the voltage wave that swept down the T-tubules came from the sarcolemma, the cell membrane of the muscle cell, And that involved the opening of all of those voltage-gated sodium ion channels. If this is not ringing bells, watch the last video segment. I'll say that again. Voltage-gated sodium ion channels. And what triggered them to open? The opening of the ligand-gated sodium ion channels. Just my color coding again. I think I'm using the same colors I did before, at least close to it. Ligand gated or substance gated or ligand gated or chemically gated, all different ways of saying the same thing. Ligand gated sodium ion channels. What caused them to open the acetylcholine that had been spit out by the motor neuron?
and all the sodium went sweeping in, right? How did the sodium get out? Well, thank you, sodium potassium pump for that. That's these globs right here. These are sodium potassium pumps. So big green glob. The sodium potassium pump. They pumped all the sodiums out, the potassiums in, and everybody got to sweep in there, meaning those sodium ions. Now, there are a couple things we have to discuss to understand how these cells would relax. Because right now they're in a state of contraction, aren't they? The calciums in this little scenario that I'm describing are bind to the troponins. The troponins have pivoted, fallen over, rotated, pulling the tropomycins off the active sites, allowing the mycin heads to grab and pull, grab and pull. Go through that many, many times. But in order for relaxation to happen, we need to close all the doors that were previously open. So the acetylcholine the ligand, acetylcholine, is bound to these ligand-gated sodium ion channels holding them open right now. So that sodium has rushed in, whoosh, right here, that local or greater potential, remember. So now I've got all these sodiums in here all over my cell that were previously outside. They've now come in, haven't they? These doorways are open. So what do I have to do to stop everything? Well, I gotta close the doors. And how do we close the doors? We use an enzyme for that. We use an enzyme for that. Bound up here On the cell membrane is an enzyme, a protein called acetylcholine esterase. Acetylcholine esterase. The last three letters will tell you that this is an enzyme. It's typically abbreviated like this, acetylcholine E esterase. Sorry, I just messed up my E there. Acetylcholine esterase. This is an enzyme that will erase the acetylcholine. It will take it apart. Pay very careful attention in your lectures and in your textbooks to what happens, we essentially break these acetylcholine molecules in half. I'm not gonna make this all a lecture about that. I'll show it to you in the lecture, but watch what happens. Acetylcholine esterase takes the acetylcholine and takes it apart, removes it. So then what would happen to all these ligand-gated sodium ion channels? they close. Then what would happen to all the voltage-gated sodium ion channels? They close. What would happen to all the voltage-gated calcium ion channels? They close. And then the calciums will get pumped back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Because remember, the sarcoplasmic reticulum had two jobs to store, which means gather in, and release through the voltage-gated ion channels, the calcium. So the calciums will be pumped back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum, meaning they are no longer bound to the troponins. See, I'm erasing them over here. And then the troponins flip back to their original position. The active sites get covered and the filaments slide back to where they started. So the one thing I didn't mention before was acetylcholine esterase. This is the enzyme that dismantles acetylcholine at the neuromuscular junction. 
almost as fast as I spit it out. This happens very, very rapidly. Pay attention to the time increments you learn about in your lectures. The other thing I didn't mention was good old potassium. What about potassium, everybody? What about the potassium ions? Didn't they start out inside the cell? Thank you, sodium potassium pump. Certainly they did. Now, what I want you to understand, and you may discuss this in some detail, you may discuss this not very much in your lecture here with regard to skeletal muscle fibers, but I want you to understand there are such things as voltage-gated potassium channels. I'm going to make them purple. They're pretty much everywhere the voltage-gated sodium channels are. See, I'm drawing in these purple ones. There are such things as voltage-gated potassium ion channels. And they open up during the action potential wave also, allowing the potassiums that had been in here to leave. But these channels are slow. They're sluggish. They're not as fast as all the other ion channels. They don't open as quickly, they don't close as quickly, but they are still there. Just as an example, so if you've watched the previous video, if you haven't, make sure that you do, the one where we draw the skeletal muscle cell, this, this mess right here. And it looks like I lost part of my cell membrane, everybody, so let me draw it back in. If we think about the steps in the contraction, of a skeletal muscle fiber. Here we go, there's my piece of cell membrane returning. So that sodium potassium pump established that resting membrane potential of about negative 85 or negative 90 millivolts. I want you to listen very carefully to what I say. It goes something like this. A motor neuron releases acetylcholine into the synaptic cleft of the neuromuscular junction. The acetylcholine binds to the ligand gated sodium ion channels found there causing them to open. Sodium that had been previously pumped out will rush into the cell, whoosh, 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 creating a local or greater potential right here at the neuromuscular junction. If the local or greater potential is big enough, it reaches about negative 55 millivolts. That will trigger the opening of the first voltage-gated sodium ion channel. And once the first voltage-gated sodium ion channel opens, they will all open in a self-propagating, unstoppable wave all over the sarcolemma and whoosh, down the t tube the voltage wave going down the T-tubules will trigger the opening of the voltage-gated calcium ion channels of the sarcoplasmic reticulum along the calcium that was stored there to leave. Right about in here somewhere, we'll get the opening like a turtle, very slow, of the first voltage-gated potassium ion channel. The voltage-gated potassium ion channel will say, are we opening now? I think we're opening. And then the potassium that had been pumped in will gradually start leaving my cell. Meanwhile, the calcium has entered the sarcoplasm, binding to the troponins, causing them to pivot, roll over, fall down, pulling the tropomyosins off the active sites, exposing the active sites to the myosin heads, which will then grab and pull, grab and pull, sliding the actin filaments toward the center of the sarcomere. This is contraction. At the same moment, acetylcholine esterase will sweep through the neuromuscular junction, actually it's already there, and it will dismantle the acetylcholines, causing the ligand-gated sodium ion channels to close. This will cause the voltage-gated sodium ion channels to close. This will cause the voltage-gated calcium ion channels to close, and calcium will be actively pumped back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. This means the troponins will go back to their original shape. The tropomyosins will recover the active sites. The actin filaments will slide back to where they started. And right about in here somewhere, the voltage-gated potassium ion channels will say, oh, are we closing? Now I was just opening, and apparently now we're closing and they will slowly close all over the sarcolemma and down the T-tubules. 
So by the end of my story, as you might guess, I've said this fast a few times in my life. By the end of my story, what has happened is the sodiums that were outside are now in. The potassiums that were inside are now out. And who's going to fix that for me, everyone? Just steady and true, like old faithful, the sodium potassium pumps will pump the sodiums back out and the potassiums back in, reestablishing that resting membrane potential in my muscle cells. This is the relaxation of the skeletal muscle fiber. Pay very close attention to your lectures. Watch these two video segments, contraction and then relaxation of muscle fibers. And I strongly encourage you draw pictures, draw your own pictures. Don't just use mine. Draw your own. That's what helps you study and hopefully allows it to make more sense for you. I'm knocking on wood here. Hopefully it makes more sense for you.